What's going on YouTube? Aiden Maxfield back at it again. With the Chevy Colorado. Today we are going to be replacing this lovely little gadget right here. It's the serpentine belt temperature temperature. Wow. Serpentine belt tensioner as well as replacing the drive belt um, as well. Uh, part number for the tensioner is going to be a 38178. I got this from my local O'Reilly's part store. And it's going to be a K060196A for the belt. So, looking at the truck, these trucks aren't the most difficult to do, but they're also the most pain, I want to say. So I'm going to get you guys set up over here on the makeshift tripod. All right. So the tensioner in this truck is located right down in this area. I'm going to try my best to show you guys how to do it. So basically what you want to do is you just want to get your 3 8 ratchet. Make sure it's in the off position. There is a spot already in the tensioner where they sit. Basically what you want to do is you just want to get on there. Make sure you're going the right way. I lied. It's not off. You want to go on with it. So you want to go to the right. And act as if you're tightening the belt. Drop it. It is a pain, especially if you don't have a lot of room. But it is doable. So just like that. The belt comes off. And what you want to do is because we are replacing this belt, just make a mental note of how everything is run. So basically this one just kind of rolls around the top of the engine, over to the idler, over the water pump, over the alternator, over the crankshaft crankcase, so on and so forth. It's basically not the end of the world. It's just, you know, memorizing how everything goes. And set that aside. Now we just got to figure out a way to get our ratchet back. Well, break it. So this is basically like an emergency situation that I'm doing right now. I'm just trying to get a screwdriver in there enough to really pry the sucker back and just release it. I would advise against this because if this does decide to let go, which it will, it will fly out. do some good number on you. Alright, so now, alright, so, we're just trying to work this off here. Probably would have been better off using A bigger screwdriver. You just basically want to make sure that once you get it close to popping off that your fingers aren't going to be in a pinchable area anywhere.
All right, there we go. I found the gut. All right, you're back. So now that the belt's off, you just want to make sure everything fits freely. Make sure there's nothing else. Season up. Making a racket. Stuff like that. And now, I think it's a 13 or 14 millimeter. Correction, it is actually, I believe, a 15 millimeter. All right. Awesome. So now, basically what we're going to do, we're going to put that on our trusty ratchet. We're going to wiggle that down in there. Get it on the tensioner. Switch it to the off position. And then just crack that sucker free. Kind of get you guys a good angle. And then, you know, just loosen her up. Just like so. Sometimes, once you get them loose enough, you can actually spin them off by hand the rest of the way. Other times, they fight you all the way out. Which I believe this one's going to do in the worst way. So I'm just going after this right here, which is the 15 millimeter nut that's on it. Just making sure we take our time, work it around the belt if we have well, the actual hoses if we have to. Sometimes we actually need to get bigger tools to get in here. Now you can use ratchet wrenches if you feel more comfortable. You know, doing it that way. But I think I'm going to break out my bigger 3 8 ratchet. Alright. I ended up breaking out my bigger ratchet. The swivel's just not cutting it. So, with that said, it makes life so much easier when you have a longer ratchet to actually get on the top of the area you're working on. Now, sometimes when you get new belt tensioners, they sometimes come with new bolts. Like this one that I'm working out right now. Other times they don't and you have to reuse them. If you end up having to reuse yours because yours didn't come with a new one, it's not the end of the world. Just make sure you clean it up nice and good and there's no corrosion on it or pre-existing thread locker from the first go around. driving me kind of nuts. Bolts are on the long side too, so.
sometimes it's just taking the time. False chase wins the race, especially with these drugs. Now we gotta come on this side. Broke out the swivel again. Get a better lock on it. I would actually recommend getting a longer ratchet on this if you have one. If not, you know, obviously you gotta work with what you got, but doesn't hurt just to have something on the longer side. Just helps get you down to where you gotta get to and the way that they designed these trucks they buried these bolts well again you know you just take your time now I'm starting to thread out the rest of the way by hand. Still fighting me. Which is honestly to be expected. It's a little rusty. It's been in there since it was built in 2012. So it's, you know, just, again, just make sure you're taking your time. No rush. Not when it comes to these trucks. No, we're just fighting with it still, unfortunately. Like I said, these bolts are usually on the pretty decent size, so you may be able to get it cracked and spin it out with your ratchet a couple threads and then be able to spin it by hand a couple turns and then it freezes. It happens. She's slowly coming out. There we go. All right. And just like that. Like I said, these bolts are pretty long. And... Here's our old tensioner. There's the old tensioner. Now the reason that this one's actually getting replaced is because the internal spring on this is actually causing my belt to slip, which is leading to my power steering not fully functioning. Of course my fluid is full. So, figured it was high time that I just replaced the belt, and I replaced the tensioner just because, you know, it was making a little bit of racket. So, with that being said, let's walk this over to the new part, make sure that everything matches. Indeed it does, pins line up. Alright, so now we'll grab our new part. Nice and shiny. Set you guys back up. Sorry for the shaky video. Make sure we have our bolt, slide our bolt through. Just 
like so. Basically get it prepped and ready to go. So when we get it lined up, we can just thread it right on in. Now with these particular trucks, I actually was wrong. You want to make sure that your bolt is the last thing to go in because you're going to have to take this pin and line it up with the slot that's on the block which I'm not going to lie to you guys, can be a pain. Because Chevy gives you oh so much room. So this is most likely going to be a one-handed endeavor. Trying to get it lined up as best as I can. And now the tedious process of, again, threading it in and actually getting it tightened up. Now you can use a really, 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 really short stubby ratchet if you choose to. If it makes your life easier and you don't really have all the time in the world to be sitting there and having the patience. It's understandable. I don't have the patience at the time. But it also doesn't hurt to make sure that you're doing it correctly either. Because with these trucks, anything is off, even just by a smidge, it'll not end very well for your truck. And I like to make sure that everything gets done correctly and gets put back to the original way that it actually was or somewhat close to it. Because nothing irritates me more when I go to take my truck to where I work. My boss notices a mistake that I had made. Where it's just thrown together, kind of. I also became a mechanic because I like doing things right the first time. Diagnosing things, making sure stuff gets done correctly. Helping out my friends and family whenever I can, and of course providing awesome videos for you guys whenever I can. Well, we're almost there. It's just a very tedious process of actually getting the bolt tightened back up. I hate these bolts for the simple fact of, especially if this is your first time doing your tensioner replacement, they don't tend to be cooperative at all. Sometimes they are and they come right on out. Other times they sit there, they fight you. And they fight hard. Because what else does a bolt have to do besides make your life hell? Right? Right. Bolts don't care. They're just bolts. They're doing their job and holding that specific part that you want out in. Sometimes you just gotta play hardball with them and learn how to use some acetylene torches and just heat that specific bolt up. That's what I do when I can't get a bolt free by hand. I try it by hand first. I try it with an impact second. And if none of those work, well, then it's a bolt's lucky day because that sucker's going to get cherry red hot and it ain't going to like it because by the end of the day, I'm going to win. And I usually do. Worst case scenario, the bolt just snaps and then you're 
stuck drilling the freaking thing out. And Usually what I like to do is I like to prevent drilling as much as I can. So if the bolt breaks, obviously you're kind of screwed at that point. But normally, 90% of the time, your engine bolts and stuff like that do come out in one piece. They don't break. That little tab was going to get cut, too. it in there a couple turns and then it locks up which is to be expected once you get the bolt in there and you feel it start to get tight you really want to crank down on these suckers because you don't want to be doing this job and then find out you're driving down the road and your dashboard lights up because well it decided to say, yeah, no, I'm done. And now for the fun part, the belt. Alright, let's just dive right on in. This belt, I'm actually just going to work it in. Get it kind of in the areas that it needs to be. Adjust it accordingly. So in this particular case, we are going to start with the power steering pump. Wraps around that over the tensioner underneath to the crankshaft. Again, working with new belts is literally the ideal of patience. Sometimes they cooperate, other times they don't but it's really no big deal you just gotta work it here and there so with this particular truck it goes over the water pump after we can figure out a way to get it around the crankcase Once we have it around the crankcase and the water pump, we're going over towards the driver's side of the vehicle now, where we are going to attempt and get it around the alternator. So it goes around the alternator, around that idler. And then down around to the AC. Now with this truck, I'm actually going to take it off of the power steering since that's the easiest one to reach without breaking my hand or any other body part. So I'm just going to finish wrapping this around AC compressor, making my best new best friend Help me out along the way. Oops, almost got it. There we go. So now once you feel like you've got it, you just want to pull tension on it just a teeny, teeny bit. And then check it to make sure. Everything is lining up. And everything is wrapped around. Sometimes you might get lucky enough to be able to just 
throw it around the tensioner, pull down on it, and wrap it around the rest of the way. But in this case, it's not going to cooperate all that much. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to get my ratchet prepped here. I'm going to get it lined up in place. Sometimes you might actually end up having round stuff. Didn't mean to move you guys. Alright, let me show you what we got going on. So the bolt, like I said, is around the power steering pump, comes underneath, goes over the drive bolt, then down around that to the crankshaft, which is tucked way down there. Goes around that, then up and immediately over to the water pump. Goes from around the water pump which is what I'm trying to get on. The AC compressor that's way down there comes around to this idler, around the idler, over the alternator. And what I'm trying to do, without dropping stuff and breaking everything, which I seem to be doing a very good job with, we are trying to get it around that AC. Sometimes you might need just a little bit of help from a screwdriver. Maybe even getting underneath the vehicle would help. Anything to just get it on there and be done with it. Of course, with these trucks, like I said earlier, they don't give you a whole heck of a lot of room working on them. Now I believe we have it, which we do. Okay, so now We're just going to be extra careful, making sure that nothing slips off. We're just going to keep this as best we can around the tensioner. Sometimes it pays to have an extra set of hands or a helper for this particular part. Now I'm grabbing my flexible ratchet here, which I probably could use. Okay, and now, like I said, find a way to pull tension and hold it. Sometimes you need a little extra, which in this case I need a whole lot extra. only downside with new belts. Sometimes they're great, other times not so much. Alright, and we ended up getting it on. Oh, that was a chore. Okay. So now, belt is on, tensioner is installed. And we are done with this job. Thank God. That was a pain. 
Oh, that's going to do it for this video, guys. As always, if you are stopping by for the first time, please like and subscribe for much more how-to videos, breaking stuff down on how to do repairs correctly at home with a very limited supply of tools and without a lift. Take care and have a wonderful day.